So I guess I guess that would be a really streamlined way to um, validate data. <laughs> guys, we're learning. We're learning together. This is great. This is fantastic. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, first of all, welcome. Yeah, this is a a bit of a Zod tutorial. I'm I'm diving into Zod myself. I think it's fantastic for forms. Um, so for starters, uh, all the code for this is going to be in the description in uh, a GitHub link. So feel free to download it. It's a Next.js project. We're using TypeScript. We're using Zod. I've got the endpoints built out. Um, nothing too crazy. Just a, a employee um, list and employee form where we can post a employee's name, um, their position. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll say Ryan Pags. Uh, we'll say SWE for software engineer. And then the third uh, line is the um, salary. So we'll go ahead and just pop that in here. And um, you can see that it, it shows the, the data right below. We can also delete the data. If I want to pop in a, another position or another employee, I'll just put in random stuff for now. Um, I can go ahead and delete it as well. So, so we just have basic, very basic uh, functionality. Um, I'll walk you guys through the code just to give you an idea of what we're looking at and why Zod is a, a object in here. Um, so, so the reason why Zod is, is even a thing is, is we want to validate user input. We want to basically, uh, indirectly say we, we need to make the user input as safe as possible. So, um, what Zod does is it allows for us to, to validate before firing off any APIs, before firing off any sort of endpoints and, um, and doing any sort of query requesting HTTP request. You can already just as the form gets submitted, you can immediately validate whether it's valid or not. Um, so let's, that's Zod in a nutshell. Um, there's a ton more to it to it as well. I'm, I'm learning more and more about it. Um, you, can, you can infer your types from it as well. So here's kind of something you can do. Um, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll pause on that in a moment. Um, let's, let's just overlook the code and see what's going on. So first we have all the imports, of course. Then um, I start my, my uh, function. I've got my state. Um, I just have my basic async, uh, just get employees uh, function right here. Kind of ignore all the extra Jimmy jazz right here, all that stuff. Just, just your basic, uh, just fetch data, get it back. Um, and this is going to be Zod. This is where the, the, the magic happens. But let's, let's kind of comment this out actually for now. Let's not focus on Zod. Let's just continue looking at um, what's going on. This is also as part of Zod, of course. Um, but so I have this, this post employee function, this post employee function, what it receives is an employee name, an employee title and an employee salary. Um, I then take those three things. I put them into, um, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll make it look like this. This is kind of how, um, I'm used to seeing functions, right? So, so it's just a function, um, that's pulling in the employee name, title, salary. Um, I'm then taking that and making it an object myself. And this is how I'm doing that just through this right here, passing that as an object, and then I'm sending that employee data object just to the back end. So, so however you guys kind of do that, that's, that's all that's built out here is just, um, just that. So I'm just posting that to my employee endpoint on the back end. Um, I've just got to delete, delete employee, very basic function here, just according to the employee ID, um, delete that employee that I choose to delete. Um, I have a just on on mount. Just go ahead and, and fetch the get employees endpoint. Um, if 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 loading is happening, that's just something I do with the on mount function or the get uh, employees function. Really, this this actually should be done here organization wise. But uh, so I can go ahead and pop that here. Um, so when I fetch to get employees, when I fetch the initial fetch for the employee data. Um, I set a loading variable to true, and then I set a loading variable to false. Um, there's many ways you could do this. You could set uh, like data state, you could have like an idle uh, loading, a success state, a failure state, kind of like a tan stack query does. But um, but that's this is just a basic kind of, let's just set loading to true, set it to false. And then if loading is happening, I just want to show the template loading. So this is what it would look like if, if it was fetching data. It would just say loading. And then if it's if data is fetched and we are no longer loading because I've got a response, I've set the response, and then I set loading to false, we then just look at the template, which is everything we see here. So we have our, our form, we have our inputs, 
um, which is just, you, you see the three inputs right here. So maybe I could zoom out a bit for you guys. Um, and I'll zoom back in, of course, um, after. And then we have our employees list down below. So these could be components, right? Um, they really should be. But, but I just ha I have it all here just on, on one page, just one page. It's, it's a chunk of code, um, but it's, it's all here. It's all here for at least on the front end. Um, so that's, that's what we're looking at. And then as mentioned on the back end, um, so I've got my Prisma, right, integrated. Um, I've got my schema with my, my employee model and uh, whatever ID model. I think this was an example I actually used for another video. But, um, but the employee model is what we're modeling here. Um, Prisma is great. Prisma is great for wrapping around the database, but, but we can ignore that for right now. Let's take a look at the backend APIs. Um, all I'm doing is just doing a get employees and then a post employees. Uh, and then I also have an, a one to delete, but we'll, we'll just focus on these. If you guys want to see the delete one, feel free to poke around in the repository. It is going to be below. Um, but this post employees, this is where we want to make sure our data is valid. TypeScript is amazing because we can actually import types, um, for instance, from Prisma, from the model here or from the schema. We can actually import this employee type directly or we can generate it ourselves, uh, just typing it out. But I can go ahead and say import employee and then I can actually make sure that this type here is type safe, uh, just like this. So when it posts a employee, it'll make sure that all this data is always type safe. But TypeScript is after compilation. That's the difference between Zod and TypeScript is um, this would happen after compilation, after the data has been sent. So the, the endpoints still may um, fire off even if the inputs are not validated. So what, what Zod does is on on query, on submit, it's going to check if that data is valid first, number one. Um, so so let's let's look at the client side and base employees client. And what I'm going to do is reinstantiate um, Zod here. So what Zod is, uh, how I define it, I say Z. So first, first you install Zod, so npm i Zod. Um, boom, go ahead, pull it in. It's obviously very, very, very popular. So this is it, NPMI, uh, Zod. I'll have this in the description as well. Um, so we want to pull in Zod. So we say import Z from Zod. And then I say Z.object. I open it and do my curlies. I define my schema, right? The, the, the form schema, right? Whatever, whatever um, form inputs I have, let's say if we wanted to add one more thing, like employee location or something, like where they live, um, or like employee zip code, maybe uh, we could say Z dot um, number for that. And um, and I, I believe we could do some other things like min. So there, there needs to be at least, I think it's for zip codes, there's at least four at most five, I believe is what it is, or six maybe. I, I think most zip codes are five numbers, but, but um, you could do things like this right out of the box with Zod. And if someone puts in, um, let's say a, a eight digit number, you know, it's it's it could be bad um, uh, bad data. So so that's what Zod is trying to prevent. It's trying to immediately write off the initial submission. Um, it's saying no, that's not valid data. That's not acceptable for our schemas. Let's let's eject that. Um, likewise, there's an employee email. Um, so so an email is more than just a string, right? It's it's also supposed to have an at character. You know, a dot com or a dot net. Some of those values. So, so, they, so Zod also has a, a Z dot string and dot email um, uh, specific uh, data handler function. So, so that's the beautiful part about Zod is it is kind of out of the box. It has some of these things pre-built. Um, I'm still learning a ton about it. And there's one thing that I did just learn. So uh, let me show you guys what I, what I did learn here. Um, maybe after after we integrate it, actually, yeah, let's let's integrate it first, and then and then I'll show you what I learned. Um, so 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 after you build your your form, right? Let's say you have uh, whatever whatever your form might be, um, whether it's for meal plans, for workouts, for um, anything in the world. So you build you build your your input form schema. Um, you didn't then declare it as a a, a variable. So I'll say employee object. 
And what I want to do here is in my function where I'm receiving this employee object, all that data, um, you know, from the form when people update the employee name, the employee title, the employee salary, all these things, I, I want to say employee object dot parse employee data. Um, or, or you could even, I guess, technically do this and not have an employee data uh, deal. Technically, I, th I think that would work too. Um, and then instead of passing in employee data, we pass in now valid data. So it just it adds it adds one extra layer of of security. So now all that data going to the back end, it's it's going to be gold. It's going to be uh, pure data, um, exactly as as we wanted it. And anything anything that doesn't match this input schema. Um, it is. It is. It's obviously not going to work. It's. It's not going to be a submitted form. So. So TypeScript, for instance, we can make it a string. We could say, oh, like if I want to have an employee email, we can always make sure it's a string value. But to go as far as making sure there's an at symbol, making sure it's um, you know within a certain character limit, like 90 characters or something, uh, making sure there's no weird. Um, uh, what. What is it like the these the alligator brackets in emails? Because sometimes you could you could do. I think SQL injections that way, or at least try to. Um, there, there, there's just a lot of things out of the box that just right away, this adds a lot of safety for our forms. So, so it's, it's a really powerful way to, um, to add security to your, 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 your forms. The additional point that I wanted to add was you can actually infer types as well based on your, your, Zod objects. So now I just built a type based on this employee object. So this type right here, if if you're using TypeScript, it now is modeling the the object we just built. So we can actually, um, for instance, valid data. We can we can say stuff like this as employee data. Make sure it's type safe um, or even valid data down here. You could say as employee. You now have a type basically from derived from Zod, from the very schema you built. Um, so so it's, it's really beautiful. Now, I don't know how much I'll use that personally because I, I use Prisma um, or I just generate types, but, but I could see maybe myself adding that in the future into my, my workflow. So I'll kind of mess around with it, see, see maybe if there's a smarter way to do it. Maybe I could put it here as well. Employee data, potentially. Let's see. Employee data as employee data. Would that work? I don't know. I don't know if this would work, guys. I, I don't know. Um, so I guess posting employee data, we would have to... Let's see. Technically go like this, I think. Pass it in as an object. And then... Oh, maybe that would work. Well, there you go. Actually, well, I guess that is a whole bunch cleaner. So... Um, then we wouldn't have to do all this. We could actually just pass it in like this. And I wouldn't need it there because it's already validated. So I guess, I guess that would be a really streamlined way to, um, validate data. <laughs> Guys, we're learning, we're learning together. This is great. This is fantastic. Um, so, so this is, this is a, the, one of the things I'm, I'm certainly going to be integrating in my, my forms as a front end, uh, engineer for anything that's, that's data input thing, forms, inputs, um, anything alike to that is, is where I'll be using Zod and, uh, looks like, looks like this, this type, uh, situation seems to be a bit useful. So, so I'll have this repository ready for you guys. Um, I hope you also use Zod in your builds. It's been Pags, uh, or excuse me, it's Pags. It's been great, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Cheers.